Good man. Genuinely good man. He did something for me which I'll never forget. He looked after my family, he looked after my sister and my brother-in-law while I was away. And that was a lovely gesture. A lovely gesture and it's something I've never forgotten. I don't know from the bloke, right? It's been all right. He's a good businessman. He's got, he's got a brain on him, but you know, he surrounds himself with a bunch of goons, right? I wasn't going to be a goon. He was good to me. He was good to my family. He was good to my mum. He was good to everybody. What can I say about the man? I mean, it's like biting the hand that feeds you. Without him, who knows where I would have ended up. And yeah, I stood next to him in the dock because he didn't do nothing wrong. And I'll say that to my dying day, that he never done nothing wrong. I think it's the biggest miscarriage of justice ever, uh, ever happened in the history of uh, Great Britain, really. One of them. I mean, he'd done a couple of things. We snapped a few people around. We'd... We looked after people. People treat us with respect, we treat them with respect, you know. He's a very intelligent man, Charlie. He's a very, very intelligent man, but I think he got too big with his boots. And I just, from what he'd done to me, I can't think anything more of him as being like an, an animal. He's a gentleman. He, uh, he's a businessman and he's a gentleman. In the 60s, London was owned and ruled by two families. North of the river, the Crays. To the south, the Richardsons. Some movies portrayed these families as violent, stupid men who went around shooting or cutting anyone who got in their way. I'm going to tell you my story, so you make up your mind about what it was really like. I'm Charlie Richardson. Charlie! Get up! Get up! Charles Richardson, I'm arresting you. You're not obliged to say anything unless you wish to do so, but anything you do say may be put down in writing. Two very Give important things happened on the 30th of July 1966. Oh, England won the World Cup with Kenneth Wollstoneholme uttering those immortal words. Oh, fuck off! And Nobby Styles digging his way across the Wembley turf. But more importantly, for me, about 7 a.m., those bastards from Scotland Yard come knocking at my door and nick me. One of you want to go downstairs? Put the kettle on, eh? I'll go. Peters. Cuts. <laughs> Didn't matter, though, because I'd get off. I've got to brush my teeth. Uh, I always got off. Away. It has taken 104 prospective jurors before we were able to decide on U12. It is now up to you to decide the fate of one of the most notorious crime gangs in London. It will not be an easy task. You are about to embark on a case which may affect the future of the law in this country. Therefore, I intend to inform you that for the duration of the case, you will be under surveillance. This means that plainclothes police officers will shadow you to and from your home so that no improper approach may be made by anyone. You shall also be installing in each of your houses a special phone. This phone will have direct access to the police. Should any one of you or your families be approached by anyone regarding this case, please use the phone. Or if you're at all scared, also use the phone. Take him apart. This has nothing to do with the trial, Charlie. Oh, it has everything to do with the trial. I'm being set up here. This Lawson's a fucking fascist. Everyone knows it. Ask Frank. Mr. Fraser's opinion, the judge is not going to carry much weight. You've seen that. You listen to me. His parents, they went out as guests to Mussolini's fucking wedding. His old man sponsored German propaganda ships in the war. And this cunt stood as a black shirt's member of parliament for Hammersmith fucking north. Now all I've done is sent a few old dears on holiday with the proceeds of a bit of hooky gear. I failed to see... She what? failed to see what? Don't you get it? I'm being set up here. One says we're eating sandwiches. The other says we're eating scam. They can't even get their story straight, they're so fucking thick. Now what's all this shit now about torture again, eh? 
Where'd I get this fucking? They produced. You fucking find out who's being the press this shit. They produced a black box, Charlie. You work for me. Do you still fucking work for me? Oh, good. Good. So you were there. So you heard what they said. They said it was like the one Mr. Richardson used. Like the fucking one. I mean, it's like you saying, you know, you know, my client was stabbed. You know, you know, don't have a knife. You know, but is, is a weapon like the one you used? Like the one fucking used. You keep your fucking ears shut. Now suddenly, I'm going to be touching it. But it's just me. Me and my brother Eddie. It's not much of a fucking game, is it? Charlie, what do you want me to do? <laughs> a fuck tonight. You've got to pick for them, Charlie. Everybody who leaves this country has to pay you to pop their car. Yeah, I know that. Every scrap you have the Thames is so now. I mean, your clubs, pubs. Yes. You're, you're more powerful than the police. I'm this business with you. I'm there. And you think that's it? I'm having a clean up, Charlie. The twins will be next. Fuck off with that. Okay. Okay, I was a bit nosy. I slapped a few people around, but everyone, everyone I fucked with was in the business. You know that. I never, never missed, never hurt outsiders. What am I looking at? Four, five years. Maximum eight. Okay. I'll do it. If I have to. Charles Richards. From the evidence I've heard in this case, I am satisfied that over a period of years, you were the leader of a large, disciplined, well-led, well-organized gang. And that for the purposes of your material interests and on occasions, for the purposes of your criminal desire, you terrorized those who crossed your path and terrorized them in a way that was vicious, sadistic, and a disgrace to society. When I remember the evidence of some of your brutality, I am ashamed to think that one lives in a society that contains men like you. The sentence of this court must be severe and for the following reasons. The court must show that it repudiates your ideas and is revolted by them. You must be prevented from committing further crimes. It must be clear to all those who set themselves up as gang leaders that they will be struck down. I have come to the conclusion that there is no known penal system that will cure you but time. The only thing that will cure you is the passing of the years. You must go to prison for 25 years. If you enjoyed the video, please join our Facebook group. It's called Praise Crime Lords of London. We're a friendly moderated group with over 1,000 Cray and other celebrated gangster videos available for view. There's also thousands of images in the photos sections. The link for the group is in the YouTube description section. I hope we see you there soon.